Hi guys and welcome back to Maltbox, the non-chill filtered whiskey blog. I'm Andy and I'm back here today with another whiskey review. Now the whiskey that I'm going to be reviewing today is a Campbelltown single malt scotch whiskey. It's from the Glengyle Distillery, also known as Kilkerran. Now, at the time of recording this, the latest Springbank Local Barley, the latest Long Row Red, the latest Kilkerran 8-year-old Port and 8-year-old Sherry were released. Naturally, they sold out very quickly. Naturally, a lot of people were very upset for not getting one as a result. I'm not going to be reviewing one of those whiskies. I'm actually dialing it back in time a little bit to last year. I'm looking at the 16-year-old Kilkerran. Probably a bit late, but can't win it all. Here it is, the 16-year-old Kilkerran single malt scotch whiskey. This is bottled at 46%. As with a lot of Springbank and uh, J&A Mitchell products in general, they proudly say on the label, non-chill filtered and natural colouring. And it is a nice sort of like rich gold uh, from in part, thanks to the in part bourbon maturation, bourbon cast maturation. Now, let's get this out of the way. I appreciate my background has probably changed somewhat. It's a bit chaotic, there's gaps, there's whiskies missing. That's because we're actually in the process of moving out in theory, touch, touch some wood. Um, hopefully we should be uh, going through in a couple of weeks at the time of recording this. And it's kind of one of the reasons why I wanted to record this video as well. I've not had the opportunity, a lot of things have kind of come up in the meantime. And it's just been sat there open on the shelf. And I thought, you know what? I think now's the time. All I've got on my shelf now are my open bottles or what's left of the open bottles that I've not already carted off into storage somewhere. Now, a little bit about this bottle, this particular bottle, not just the generic release itself, but this, this bottle of mine. So this was the first batch. This was bottled in October 2021. It made me laugh a little bit because when this arrived, look at the label some damage on there. It came like that. I didn't do that. I don't care. I said this at the time. I think I posted a tweet. There's there's quite a few people I think experienced the same thing and they were like on the on their iPhone like ah, yeah, yeah, you, you've ruined my life. Don't know what I'm gonna do. Ah and I'm like that doesn't matter does it really? That matters. That colour coloured stuff uh, which is ironically not coloured. You know what I mean. But Anyway, the 16 year old, I am using a Glencairn glass as well for this review rather than my usual stem wine tasting glasses because again, they got carted off into boxes. I don't know where they are anymore. Uh, however, I found this Glencairn, gave it a bit of a wash and, and here we go. A Brookladdy Glencairn actually. So again, 46% on the nose. Now let's remember, this is not comparable with those latest releases. The eight year old Sherry, and the eight-year-old port. This is more akin to the 12-year-old. That's the measuring stick for me. It's the 12-year-old with an extra four years. It's not been, you know, subject to the same maturation methods in terms of like, you know, sherry finishes, heavy sherry finishes and heavy, heavy port finishes or dual maturations that those two new releases are. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> oh, getting excited. Um, th this is much more akin to the maturation methods of the 12-year-old similar strength well same strength in fact um and i think i think for me i mean this sold out as well pretty quick from memory i was quite lucky to get a hold of this but i wasn't in a rush i just stumbled across it and found it and i was like yeah i'll, I'll have it i think from memory guys and i do apologize this cost me about 60 quid ish back in 2021 um <laughs> For a 16 year old whiskey, that's good value at the minute. It is. It is. That's the times we live in. What is not good value is somebody purchasing a Springbank local barley 10 year old for roughly the same amount and then sending it to a retailer or straight to auction um, where said retailer then charges 650 to 750 pounds for it. The secondary market is piss take really. But the problem is that people pay it. Don't feed the flippers, man. Just don't do it. Just drink it. Open it. Crack it open. 
I'm really disappointed, in fact. I might as well say it. I am really disappointed to see some retailers that I've used previously do this, where they buy a bottle off someone. Either they buy a bottle off someone and then sell it for 600, 700 quid. Or, the rumour is, at some allocation is retained and it doesn't go to the public, it just goes straight up at the inflated price. And that's a joke. If you see, in my opinion, if you see any retailers charging over the odds for a spring bank or a local, you know, whatever it is, it doesn't even have to be spring bank or the sought after bottles. Don't use them again. I've already crossed three retailers off my list this week. I won't name them on here, but I've crossed three of them off and I'm really, really disappointed in you. You know you are. Anyway, back to the Kilkerran 16. So on the nose. For me, softer than the 12. It's got a lovely kind of creaminess. That saltiness is in there, salinity, sea air, just like in the other Kilkerrans and Springbanks. The barley is there in abundance. It's lovely, sweet, sugary barley. And the peat, the smoke is barely there. Kilkerran, you know, is, is kind of, from, to my mind, a bit more akin to Springbank in terms of its PPM. I could be wrong, but that's my flavour. Like, that's how I taste it, at least. Rather than your long grow, for example. But on the nose, it's just soft, creamy, very, very, again, salty with the barley there. Very barley forward. Bit of vanilla, maybe. Some lemon. I think the 12 year old packs a bit more punch on the nose to be honest. Not saying that's a good thing or a bad thing, but for me this is softer. The extra four years have softened this whiskey on the palate. Great texture. Becoming a little bit floral, there's some... Oh, it's gone now. That was a little flash in the pan. A palm of violet sweets. Just as we're heading into the finish, just while it's ongoing, spicy, warming, long. That vanilla's back again, that salinity's there. The barley's there, lovely kind of maltiness to it. A little bit of citrus. Hmm. Up front, again, I would say it's a little bit more subdued than the 12 is probably the word I'd use. Maybe a bit more rounded. I'd probably say rounded. It's not got as many jagged edges necessarily as the 12, but it's kind of what I like about the 12. I like it's a bit punchy. I like it's... That to me is their kind of truest expression. This is a lovely whiskey. The 16-year-old is a lovely whiskey. I just prefer the 12. I have no issues drinking this, I will drink this, and this is still right up there for me. It's a great, great drop, really enjoyable, really is a very, very enjoyable whiskey. I think it's still good value for money at the time of purchase. I would not pay one, pay for one, sorry, on the secondary market. As soon as you go into the realms of Springbank, Long Row, Hazelburn, Kilkerran on the secondary market, you are going to be ripped off. People paying 700 quid for a 10 year old Springbank, for example, local barley release now, if they make any money on that, they won't make much on it. I mean, I don't know who's more foolish, the fool or the fool that bought it. That's the issue I've got. There's plenty more whiskey out there. I've said it once, I've said it a thousand times, I will continue to say it. There's plenty more other options out there. Yes, Springbank is phenomenal. There's a reason, many reasons in fact, why it's in such high demand at the minute and hard to get hold of. People naturally get upset. People therefore lash out in sometimes quite offensive and immature ways. At the end of the day, it's whiskey. It's whiskey. Just remember that, it's a drink. A distillery is an alcohol factory. If you strip the magic away, it's an alcohol factory. There's plenty of others out there, plenty of other experiences, plenty of other affordable alternatives. Going back to Kilkerran, however, this is a very, very good whiskey, very enjoyable, very well presented in the sense it's natural colour and non-chill filtered. Lovely drop, I will try to keep purchasing what I can from them, but I think what I'm kind of getting into the cycle of nowadays is if I miss out, 
I miss out. I didn't get any of the new releases. I didn't chase them down either. Um, probably in part because I saw how much whiskey I had when I had to box it up. It's nice when it's all on a shelf and there's a couple in boxes knocking about and you do reviews and stuff. And then when it comes to taking them all off the shelf and you find multiples or ones that you forgot about and then you find other boxes and you're like, wow, I have too many. Um, so yeah, just be mindful of that. A, there's alternatives and B, try not to spend too much money on whiskey generally. But anyway, guys, I'm going to box it off now. Thanks for watching. I'm on Instagram at maltboxwhiskey, maltboxwhiskey.com. Thanks for watching. See you soon.